Good evening. Good, mo- good evening. <laughs> I would like to start off by thanking God for none of this would be possible without him, my mom, my family. I thank y'all. The topic of my speech is, it's hard, but it's fair. I remember back when I was younger, I used to say, Mom, I can't wait to put you in a big old house and you won't have to work, you won't have to want for anything. She, she would then tell me, son, it's not easy out here. It's hard, but it's fair. Then she would say, no, as I, got, as I grew older, I realized that what my mom was saying was nothing but the truth. It started to get hard for us. My dad wasn't there uh, to support me and my younger brother. He used to say to my mom, you can't raise them boys by yourself. So like the strong woman she is, she was ready to take on the task of raising two young men with no help at all. She continued to pray to God to give her a blessing, and she received her CNA, her CNA license and got a new job, so we ended up moving back to a high ski in Jernigan Swamp neighborhood, just a few houses down from my grandmother. Boy, when I tell you moving next to my grandma was the best thing, that was the best thing. <laughs> My grandmother helped my mom tremendously. She watched us, she cooked for us, and sometimes bathed us, as she would call it. I was very into football as I grew older. Most importantly, um, most importantly, I loved to stay at them until I broke my ankle. When I went to high school, I met Mr. Futrell. Most people first time meeting their principal is at an assembly, but no, no. <laughs> My first time meeting Mr. Futrell was in the office because I had got in trouble at school. (laughs) Growing up with my father has, without my father has started to affect me. He was never there for birthdays, doctor's appointments, or anything. I never really, I never really expressed this, my feelings to my mother, to my mother because I didn't want her to think that she wasn't doing a good job because that wasn't it at all. Now here's where, here's where the story gets rough. I started picking friends very wrongly. Although I wasn't hanging in the streets at first, I was fighting a lot and was always angry. Then I remember when my boys were always doing things they shouldn't, shouldn't have been doing. But one day, one of the boys said, try this, BJ. It'll make you happy and make you cool. So like a dummy, I did it. I really felt good. I wanted to keep doing it. One day I was out at the park with my so-called friends. I admit we were doing some things we weren't supposed to be doing. So the police came up. My brother was outside and I could hear him calling my name, BJ, BJ. So the officer was about to place us under arrest and I heard my mother shouting, hold up, hold up. At this moment, I knew I was about to get the worst beating of my life. The officer pulled us to the side and told me to stop hanging around boys that are not good for me. He also told me I better thank my mom and that she saved me. That was my first wake up call and like a Mr. Know-it-all, I didn't listen. I continued on getting into trouble. I started to realize how much I was hurting my family and thought about making changes in the way I was living. It hurt watching my mother cry all the time. I kept trying to make new friends with goals and wanted something in life. Then I ran into a young lady named Latia who I fell in love with and, made a, and she made a difference. Also, my cousin Kishana kept encouraging me. I can say that one of the biggest things that moved my life in the right direction was I finished my high school courses during the first semester of my senior year. Then my college counselor, Ms. Walford, pushed me to take college courses at Ronald Chuan Community College during the second semester. Yep, you heard it. The student that was getting into trouble at school and with the law was finishing high school and enrolling into college. It was clear to me that after enrolling in the welding classes, this is what I wanted to do. Hanging out and getting into trouble was not going to help me get there. I will never forget my first experience with college classes from 5 to 10 on Thursday and Friday. 
and five to eight to five on Saturday and Sunday. Talk about a real struggle that was hard. It all paid off. In May, I graduated with a certificate in welding and walked across the stage to get my high school diploma in June. The student who could have dropped out of high school graduated from college before grad. The student who could have dropped out of school graduated from college before graduating from high school. How funny is that? <laughs> my college GPA was higher than my high school GPA. I'm gonna say that again. My college GPA <laughs> was higher than. Wait. My college GPA was higher than my high school GPA. <laughs> it really matured me a lot and put a good hair on my shoulder, or at least I used the one that was already there. I quit some bad habits, and I also got a job at Purdue Farms. No, no, no. This is not where I want to be permanently, but it is keeping me busy while I wait to go back to school. So I stand in front of you as as a changed man, I'm not perfect, but at least I have a plan now. If it wasn't for my mom, this wonderful program, my awesome principal and teachers, Ms. Robinson and Ms. Perry, I wouldn't be standing in front of, you, of all you beautiful people right now. So again, thank you, and I love you all a lot. Thanks for never giving up on me. <laughs>